Today I'm ranking Photoshop's tools from superior, of which there are plenty, to absolute fails, of which there are a few. I'd like to say the good outweighs the bad, but then I'd be spoiling the surprise. We have a lot to cover, so I'll approach the tools in groups, starting with the newest tools in the software, the Frame tool introduced in 2019, Remove 2023, and Adjustment Brush 2024. And that's saying something. Photoshop these days does not introduce many new tools, and there might be a very good reason for that. Let's start with the Frame tool. One of the most requested tools in Photoshop allows web and app designers to create mockups. And so you can draw a bunch of frames, place images into those frames, and you have a consistent design. Problem is, this feature doesn't feel like it has anything to do with Photoshop. Notice up here in the options bar, it's blank. That's a first. Can't even bring up the floating task bar. A feature that was introduced in 2023 doesn't support a feature that was introduced four years before it. Everything happens in the properties panel, or you can use the highly problematic frame tool itself. What's worse is none of the other tools even know frames exist. These are vector-based objects. I should be able to grab the black arrow tool and marquee them, but no, they're not there. And so I think the most charitable way to think of frames as being designed by a guy in his mother's basement and shipped on a floppy disk to Adobe. And for some reason, the Photoshop team was like, yes, let's add it. It's an affront to every sensibility I have. However, in deference to the fact I know a lot of you have to use this tool on a kind of regular basis, I will scoot it up a notch. Now, by contrast, the remove tool is awesome. Notice that it's a kind of upgrade to the healing brushes. It uses pattern recognition. I can just go ahead and paint around an object in order to replace the entire thing. It's not generative, so you're not going to get three different variations as you would inside Lightroom or Camera Raw, but it does a halfway decent job. Now, the thing I have, the one problem I have, it's, it's a minor problem, but up here in the edit menu, the fade command is not available. So, and by the way, this is the only static feature inside Photoshop that doesn't respond to fade. And so you might say, well, if you want to fade the brush stroke, just apply it to an independent layer. I did. It's on an independent layer. I don't want to have to have a different layer for every brush stroke. I want to fade as I go, which is why even though I would love to put remove right on top, I love this tool. It needs that fix before it's perfect, but it still gets an A. Compare that to the adjustment brush, which does not. Now imagine all the problems with the, the frame tool magnified. There's all kinds of issues. I covered this, by the way, in my roundup of new features in Photoshop beta, link in the description. However, on top of all the problems that it has, it, it's, it's imagine that it's designed by the monkeys that are owned by the guy who lives in his mother's basement. Here's the thing. It doesn't serve a purpose. Nobody was asking for this tool and Nobody will lament when it goes away. Next, we have a bunch of tools that were first introduced in Photoshop 1.0, starting with the rectangular marquee. Selected by default when you first launch Photoshop, it has an unobtrusive cursor. Look, I can draw a frame. I can go up to the edit menu and choose paste into and create an object inside that frame. Also, I can use it with modern features such as generative fill. Just select the bottom of this image and let her rip if I like. Basically, the idea is it's fully integrated into the rest of the software. Where it's a wonderful tool. Is it really the best tool inside Photoshop? You tell me what in the world is better. Really, the magic wand tools, Photoshop 1.0. Yes, indeed, beloved by new users for its ease of use, hated by the experts for its bad edges and lack of dynamic controls, long derided as the tragic wand tool. I think it holds up about as well as any 34-year-old piece of technology might. The zoom tool and hand tool, so taken for granted, and yet you can press and hold the C key and click and hold in order to zoom in continuously. You can drag back and forth for the scrubby zoom. If you don't like it while the C key is down, Turn the option off and then you have the old marquee function. You know you can press the space bar and drag to get the hand tool. But did you know if you have text active, obviously pressing the space bar is going to give you a space character unless you press control shift space or command shift space on the Mac in order to get the hand tool on the fly, which is why I say unequivocally that the zoom tool and the hand tool rank among the best tools in all of Photoshop. Next, we have the Venerable Type Tool, which these days results in vector-based type that you can scale to any size you like. But gosh, it's a quirky tool, isn't it? For example, what is this anti-aliasing option doing up here in the options bar? Just inviting you to set it to none, which will deliver jagged results. And so even though I may not always love the Type Tool, 
it gets my respect. And now for a few automated selection and selection adjacent functions that span the history of Photoshop. And so notice the object selection tool hails from 2020, making it more recent than the frame tool, and it's awesome. And so I could select this guy using the select subject button, or if I wanted more control, I could grab the object selection tool and click. And notice a moment later, if I convert this selection to a mask, it ends up looking absolutely great. We've got this awesome whisker detail. And so I was planning originally on putting this guy in the B row because frankly, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it just behaves so very, very nicely that I think it deserves a pat on the head. For filling in any selection gaps, we have the quick selection tool. It was originally introduced a long time ago, 2007, and it used to be, by the way, a real stinker. It was, if anything, not the least bit quick. It's just really a selection brush, by the way, but thanks to the advent of AI inside Photoshop, it has gotten not perfect, but so much better. Next, another Photoshop 1.0 feature, the lasso tool, not the least bit automated, just allows you to draw freeform selection outlines. I know you're thinking big deal, in which case we agree, it is a big deal. And notice if you press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, then you can draw a freeform polygon like so. It's great for roughing out selections in combination, for example, with generative fill, which is why to this day it remains the bomb. Hey, real quick. Photoshop started with just 20 tools. 34 years later, it offers a total of 69. I'm showing nearly half of them here. Want to see the rest, every last one of them? Then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. An early attempt to automate the lasso tool was the magnetic lasso, and bless its heart, watch how it works. All you gotta do is click to establish the outline, and then just kinda move your cursor around the guy. Notice that I don't have to drag. And it's just laying down points as we go. And so what I'm gonna say about this tool is it absolutely gets an A for effort, which is just another way of saying it gets a D. The last tool in this group isn't a selection tool at all, it's the move tool, which allows you to move one or more selected layers anywhere you like, which is objectively great, right? Yes, with the exception of the fact that Adobe in its infinite wisdom has seen fit to heap on the checkboxes auto select is on by default. We can disagree about that one, but these new four checkboxes all on by default, that is excessive, which is why if you ask me, the move tool is just to be. Now we have a trio of vector-based drawing tools, including the pen tool, comes to us from Photoshop 2.0. And if you know anything about it, you know that it allows you to select anything, no matter how complicated, inside Photoshop, making it the definition of a superior tool. It is a little advanced, however, which is why we have the freeform pen tool, which allows you to just drag around as if you were using the lasso tool. However, it does lay down a bunch of points, so it makes for a chunky path outline. We need better smoothing and beware the magnetic checkbox that turns it into a kind of simulation of the magnetic lasso tool. So tell you what, I think this guy belongs kind of nestled right above that said tool, by the way. And then we have the rectangle tool. Now the rectangle tool is a great tool. It's a dynamic tool, allows you to draw a rectangle, not much to that, of course, but we do have this squad of round corner options right here in the properties panel. I could change this guy to 100, rounds off all the corners, double click on one of the widgets and round it independently. But notice up here in the options bar, I could change this guy to 300 and nothing's gonna happen because that's going to affect the next rectangle I draw, which is crazy. So properties is dynamic and the options bar is not. That just makes for confusion Adobe, which is why even though I want to put the rectangle tool up here, because it's a really great tool. I'm going to put it in a still very esteemed row. Now for what I call the smartphone tools. One state-of-the-art features now routinely available to smartphones. For example, did you know that Photoshop offers a red-eye tool? Get out of town. It also offers this magic eraser, which will automatically get rid of a background. So I could click the remove background button, which is not perfect, but in its defense, it gets rid of the whole thing, and it does so non-destructively with a layer mask, or I could use this Photoshop 5.5 feature called the Magic Eraser Tool. It was terrible back then. It just permanently deletes pixels using Magic Wand technology, so it's just like, exactly like selecting a region using the Magic Wand Tool and then pressing the Delete key. And so that's 
abysmal, frankly. Let's just go ahead and put this guy where he goes. Next, we have the patch tool. Now, I know some of you are thinking, be careful, Deke. I like that tool. And sure enough, it's a good tool. It works well. I'm going to get rid of this guy using the patch tool. So all I have to do is select him roughly using the lasso tool, which I've done in advance. And then I'll just go ahead and drag it over to this neutral location and release and he's gone. Isn't that great? However, it is a pixel level modification, meaning that it's destructive technically. And so it's not the way that I like to work anymore. I'll just go ahead and put it down here in the magic wand row. So not a bad tool, but not a great tool either. Now we have the content aware move tool. Are you aware of the magic editor feature? It's a new Android feature. This is it, by the way. However, this tool came out in CS4, which was 2009. So 15 years ago, that is amazing in my opinion. However, not really amazing enough. I'll just go ahead and switch to the content aware move tool. And let's say I want to move this guy farther away from his partner. In fact, he doesn't actually know her. And then I'll just press the enter key in order to apply that change. He moves and Photoshop fills in the old region using content aware. So not only is it a pixel level destructive modification, but it's not even generative. And so it is a very old tool in other words. And so of course it belongs down here in the magic wand row, which is a row of tools that arguably shouldn't even exist anymore. Now let's take a look at another group of tools that originally hail from Photoshop 1.0 that have gone off in different directions. Some good, some not so good, starting with the brush tool, which has really gotten so much better over time. It just keeps getting better and better. It offers, by the way, notice up here, we've got smoothing, we've got brush symmetry, we have so much. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint some straight brush strokes like so by shift clicking with the tool, that's all. So I can show you that even though when I right click, I have access to size and hardness, the thing that's creating these lumps in my brush stroke is a function that's known as spacing right here, which is set to 25% by default. That's too high. Watch this lumpy brush stroke. If I take it down to 10, it gets smooth. Now, the irritating thing is that this option is available with a right click from a bunch of other tools, including the healing brush. So why not from the brush tool? That's a big problem, which is why it hurts my heart not to put this tool at the top of the stack. That's where I want to put it, but it just got that one little blemish, but it's a big blemish. It's a big stain. It's a big black eye. And so it goes in the next row. Now let's turn our attention to the eyedropper tool, which is a great tool. It's perfect. In fact, it lets you lift a color, a single color, or just by clicking inside of an image or a group of colors, sort of an amalgam or a composite colors. Well, all kinds of stuff you can do. There just isn't any problem with this tool, by the way. So it goes in the top. Next, we have a very problematic tool. Indeed, the gradient tool. It used to be called the blend tool. It would just blend between the foreground and background colors. Sound familiar? Sound like something that it used to do in the old days? I only use this tool almost exclusively for masking. I'm not trying to do fancy stuff with it. And yet, if I try to switch to a different color scheme, I've got to twirl open basics because there's all all these other folders of iridescent colors like I'd ever use any of that garbage I don't want that and so even though the gradient tool is an essential tool it has been harmed over time and it has been messed up frankly it used to be so much better it used to be up here but now it's down here gosh I, I I'm getting ready to cry can you tell it in my voice now for a tool I've never loved which is a paint bucket tool and get this what it does is you just click in a portion of an image and it recolors it based on magic wand technology my goodness it should be called the magic bucket that would keep people away now I'd be remiss if I didn't cover the basic editing tools the dodge tool lightens pixels the burn tool darkens them the spudge tool does things to the saturation values and the smudge tool smears them. Now they're all destructive tools, meaning that they modify pixels directly. So they're not my favorite bunch. It would be nice if Photoshop would update them somehow. However, in the meantime, they still have their cadre of fans. The sponge, the dodge tool right here, I think it, it, it belongs in this standard destructive row. And same with the burn tool. 
it it does too. They're decent tools. They do what they advertise. You can also switch between them by pressing the Alt or Option key, by the way, if you want a little trick. The sponge tool is just bizarre, in my opinion. You drag around in order to desaturate colors. I guess if something's too saturated, then you can make it less. And it works along with vibrance if you wanted to, which is a kind of vague control these days. Anyway, I don't think much of it. There's better ways to work. But I love me the smudge tool. It's not great for use in continuous tone photographs, but it's so useful for masks. If you run into an area of hair that just doesn't reconcile very well, just just go ahead and paint with the smudge tool on that mask. Now I'll wrap things up with a look at three tools that are universally beloved, and rightly so, they're all great. Starting with the clone stamp tool, another version 1.0 tool inside Photoshop, originally called the rubber stamp tool. But what it lets you do is clone from one location to another. So notice this guy has this kind of awkward highlight next to his head. What I'm going to do is switch to the clone stamp tool. And then you need to press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click to specify a source point. And now notice you can paint from that portion of the image like so, and because I'm working with a blurry brush and this guy's a blurry dude, he's a little bit out of focus. Everything works out pretty nicely. Now, it's not the best tool on the face of the planet. It's not rocket science or anything like that, but it's really great. I only say that because there is room for improvement. I will say that. And, and it's not in the form of making this tool any better. It's in the form of switching to a different tool, the upgrade to the clone stamp tool, which is the healing brush. It is the same tool with healing technology built in, which when it works is superior. Finally, we've got the history brush. Now, I'm not sure if you know about that one. What it lets you do is paint from a historic state associated with an image. So notice the history panel right here. It shows all of the steps that I've performed inside this particular image. I can go back to the very beginning where I see the guy in a different location, or I could go where I am, go back to it, in other words, and I could select the open state right there as a source state for my history brush. Go ahead and close that panel. Now switch to the history brush. It looks just like that icon we saw a moment ago, and I can paint in a copy of this guy. Okay, that's lame. Fortunately, tradition dictates that I take a moment to move the history brush into its appropriate tier. Is it a superior tool? I don't really think that, but it definitely doesn't belong down here with the magic bucket. In fact, this is a solid A of a tool if ever there was one. And now let's take a look at the final version of the list, complete with version history. Check it out. See how many tools began life a long time ago across the top here. That means also, of course, Photoshop has had time to sweeten the tools, but we do have some recent entries. The remote Move tool from 2023, the object selection tool from 2020, the so-called quick selection tool from CS3, which is the equivalent, I believe, of 2007, in case you're curious. But anyway, notice how many of them are 1.0 tools, along with a cameo from the 1.0 toolbox over here on the right-hand side. And then I thought it'd be ever so charming if we just took a moment to see the old tool icons on top of the new. What do you think? Comment below, not to mention like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. That's nearly half the tools, by the way. For the other half, including such luminaries as Slice, Sharpen, and Crop, I know I didn't cover Crop. Join me at patreon.com slash deke now, and then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.